God will answer and we win. Today is the second Sunday of the Great Lane, and we also have Sunday, we call it the healing of the leper. And also yesterday we celebrate the feast of St. Ephraim and St. Theodore. So may God bless all of you, especially those who carry these names. And we believe that this man who had leprosy, when he went to Jesus, and he said, if you are willing, you can heal me, you can clean me. And then Jesus, he said, I will, and he touched him, and he was cleansed. So your prayer can do a lot. Today, the Sunday, it's special for our Sunday school beloved one. And uh, today, we decide to have Q and A with them. So they have a question, and I will try my best to answer their questions. So I will give you the mic. So sometimes you think our kids, they don't have a question, but they think a lot, and they believe a lot. Let me see their question. Go ahead. Tell me your name first. My name is Thomas. Thomas, good. Go ahead, Thomas. Can I really want to become a priest? Why I become a priest? Oh, good question. It's not the story. Okay. I become a priest, number one, because I love God, like everyone. And then I went way beyond and farther, because I want not only to love God, but to serve God. So I felt I have call in my heart to go and serve God and to give my life totally to the church and to God, of course, and to become a priest. To become a priest is very important and it's a big honor for me and for my family as well because I serve God on the altar, I hold his body and his blood, I preach his word, so it's big honor and big blessing for me. But there is one thing I want you to know, to be a priest is not a job. We all have goal in our life when we grow up to have a job. For example, what do you want to be when you grow up? When you teacher? You want to be teacher. And you? Artist. You? you? Doctor. So everyone has different goal. And all the jobs, all the careers, is very important and we need it in our life. But to be priest is not job. To be priest you have to dedicate all your life to God, and it's not a job that you can do it sometimes, and sometimes else you cannot. It's always you dedicate your time, your life to God, and to serve His people. So to be a priest is very big a pleasure, and thank you for the question, Thomas. <coughs> question number two. You want to say? Go ahead. How someone become priest? <laughs> so now, who said want to be a uh, teacher? So in order to be teacher, what do you have to do? Tell me. Can you give me the mic, please? please. I'll take from your time today, but it's worth it. So, how you can be teacher? Tell me. What's the steps? Go to college. To do tests. To learn. Have experience, then eh? you become teacher. Also, to be priest, you have to go to college, but we call it seminary. A seminary where the people who want to become clergy, want to be priests for months, they go, they study about God and this science we call theology. Theology, it's two Greek words, it means the science of God, which is we study about God. And after we graduated, of course, we go, we train, there is a clergy older than us, they teach us and they train us how to do liturgy, for example, how to baptize people, how to uh, do weddings, and all the prayer, all the service that the priest has to do. So number one, you have to have call. Number two, you have to study theology and you have to be trained. And after that, of course, the bishop or the patriarch, they do something they call ordination. Anybody know what word ordination means? Which is 
the bishop or the patriarch he has authority to make me priest or to become a priest or clergy. Okay? Thank you very much, Tom. Go ahead. Tell me your name and go ask question. Put the mic close, please. Philip, and are you married? Good question. <laughs> what do you think? Am I married? No or yes? Yes? No. No. I am not married. But at the same time, I dedicate, as I say, all my life to God. So the church become my wife. Okay? So you don't have wife. You don't have kids. You are all, what do you call me? Father. A father. And what do you call your father in the home? What do you call him? Father. Dad. So I'm also father, but I'm spiritual father, not physical father. Okay? Good question. Go ahead. Marina, and what's your favorite food? Oh, that's my favorite food. I'm a good listener. I like all the food. Uh, I like the chicken and the cake. <laughs> Thank you. James, are you here, James? Thank you. Right. Okay, another question. Go ahead. What's your name? Zoe. Oh, okay, Zoe. What can I answer your question? What's your favorite color? Oh, what's my favorite color? It's you. You're my favorite color. I love the whole color. I have another question. I'm very well prepared. Yes, and who makes the bircha? Oh, who makes the bircha? Do you know what bircha word me? If you don't raise your hand, what's word Gershan mean? Okay, good question. Thank you. So Gershan is a Syriac word for the holy praise that I usually, or usually the clergy, but here in our church, I do it day before, and then we use it to bless it, and we believe that the Holy Spirit will come and descend on the bread, and also we use the wine, and those, they will become body and blood of Jesus Christ. And at the end, we call it communion, and when you come receive communion, it's part of this. And it's very important to explain a little bit. Supposedly, this is, what's the shape? Circle. Circle. Looks like what? What? No, no, it's saying, go ahead, yes. What? Cross, cross inside, good for you. Where we live, we live on what? Earth, how the earth looks like. Exactly. So this is represent the whole world. And also the eternity has no end, like the circle, like round. So pretty much this is represent the earth and the heaven which is represent all of us. When I do prayer, and I pray on this, pretty much I offer God, ourselves, all of us to God. And also, you can see what we have here. Cross. Why? Why we have cross? Yes? Exactly. To honor God and to honor Christ because he was crucified on the cross. And I don't know if you can see or not, there is here like small diamonds. If we count them, can we count together? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Oh, twelve diamonds. Why, why we have twelve? Yes? Exactly, represent the 12 disciples of Jesus. And this, which means we have a mission when we receive the communion to be real disciples of Jesus Christ. And if you see a little bit, it's hard. Can you see here? You tell me what you see those small things. What is it? It's like what? Dots. Yes? So we have on each one of the 12 diamonds, we have four dots and the rest are round. We have 70 dots. Those represent also the disciples of Jesus because Jesus, he had 
12 disciples and 70 gospels. So we have pretty much all our disciples and gospels. And when we cut it, after blessing it and become body and blood of Jesus Christ, we give it because Jesus is saying, who eats my body? And drink my blood. I am him, and, and he is in me, and I am him. And this is we call it corbono, which is offering. Okay? What we call it? Corbono. Can you say it together? Corbono is Syriac word, it means offering. Okay? Do it for you. Some people they call it also Hushan, but it doesn't matter. Anybody can tell me what is made from? What we use to make? Yes. Yeast, thank you, I like that. What else? Flour, of course. Water, salt, last one? Olive oil, okay? We only use this element, and in our church, the Orthodox church, the bread, the corbono that we use has to be with yeast. We call it living bread. Not unleavened bread, we call it living bread. It's very important as an Orthodox. We use this. That's why I do it the day before. It has to be fresh, and I make it, and then we bless it, and we receive communion all of it. I will give it to you after we finish. Good question. Thank you very much. We have another question. Maybe I don't know how to pronounce Say your name, and Say question. Mary, are there a lot of priests? Are there a lot of priests? Good question. What do you think? Do we? Yes. There is a lot of priests. Okay. Not only in our Syrian Orthodox Church, but all the churches, the all Orthodox churches and the Catholic and all the churches, there is a lot of priests. Again, this is gifted from God. Do I mean? <coughs> Where God came from? He came from heaven. <laughs> yes. You know, when we talk about God, there is something we have to understand. Everything in this life has beginning and end. Okay? For example, when you raise in the school, you run. There is beginning and there is end. Yes? Every day, begin and end. Everything in our life has beginning and end, except God is eternal and everlasting. Anybody can tell me what does eternal and everlasting mean? Yes. Forever. Thank you. What else? Everlasting and eternal, it means that God he has no beginning and has no end. So we cannot apply what we have on our earth, such as a matter, a distance, a time on God. So that's why God did not come from anywhere, because God, He is the maker. He is the one who made everybody and everything around us. So we cannot ask where God came from, because He is the creator. We have beginning. When my mom gave me birth, I began. And one day when I will live, I'm going to be end up. But God, He is eternal and everlasting. He has no beginning, no end. So that's why God is always exists and He has no place to come from because He created a place in the whole earth. Good question. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Tell me your name and say what you want. Mm -hmm. Look, ask me. Oh, I love you too. Thank you. <laughs> I love you. I'm going to tell you something. Two weeks ago, I was in the church at the end. After I finished, thank you, Habib. After I finished the liturgy, and that was very inspiring to me, and I was crying when I was going home. So, there was a father, he has a son, and they were leaving also, and I was going, I was going to take my car to go home. So, it was a little kid. I know who this is, but I don't want to say his name. So, I said, hi. So, his dad was holding his hand, and he just waved to me. He said, Abuna, 
your sermon today which was very good. <laughs> and you know the Sunday school, most of the time they don't attend the liturgy. So you didn't hear my sermon that day because the kids, they weren't there. But that kid, he told me something from God that keep continue, serve God because God loves what you're doing. So I hear God's voice from the kids. May God bless you all. And we are very happy and blessed to have you here with us in the moments. Okay, thank you very much. Now we will have uh, the student of the month.